Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here on the Taxation is Theft Tour in the Freedom Mobile with Ben Farmer, our not manager, and Zach Foster, a hey. libertarian writer, activist, extraordinaire. That is a vicious rumor. And we are driving from, where are we going? We are driving from Roslyn on our way from Seattle to Boise tomorrow. Really excited about that. Last year we had an awesome group in Boise. Really surprising to see how strong the libertarian movement was there. But as you may have noticed from the title of this video and the people who are tagged in it, we have a somewhat serious matter to make fun of today. Um, or <laughs> maybe to address. Okay, we're going to address this in a, in a serious way because it, you can't just come out and say, can we all just get along? You know, you, you know, you got to acknowledge the reality of conflict when you see it. And, and I'm not one to say that there should never be any infighting in the libertarian movement. I think it's righteous and productive and, and that there are conversations and debates. But when I saw this recent one, uh, the, the, the sort of pile on on Sarwark by a lot of guys I respect, I started seeing ad hominems. And I was just like, you know what, you know, if you want to make the strategy for like, hey, libertarians debate libertarians, and then the people watching get to choose between a libertarian or a libertarian, it's better than them choosing between statist red, statist blue. Yeah, that's great. I get it. This is not such a debate. This is not a respectable conversation about libertarian strategy. This is not respectable commentary. This is just bullshit. It's stupid. It's like this petty infighting, ego-based, I, I don't know what to call it, but you know, I think a lot of libertarians who like really look up to these dudes uh, who, who are tagged in this, you know, the, the, the perspective is like, <gasps> why are mommy and daddy fighting, you know? And, and this is like, okay, well, I get to come in today and play grandpa and say, all right, slap you all around, time to shut up and get back to being decent people again, being productive. And I, I just wanna, th th there's, a, there's a couple bigger points to be made here uh, about libertarianism as, as a philosophy because it's really important that we recognize we have been sucked in to thinking of libertarianism as a political thing. It's not. It's an anti-political thing. And when we make libertarianism about more than it is, we lose sight of the real goal, the focus of creating a free, voluntary society. And what I mean by this is separating ethics from aesthetics. And this is ethics. When we talk about the message of freedom, it is an ethical message. That's why it's anti-political. Politics is unethical. It's about who do we point the guns of government at, and we're saying, no, you don't do that. You don't control people by coercion, by force, by violence through the institution of the state. It's unethical. It holds back humanity. And one of the things that is a beautiful new direction for this movement is the shift towards localization. And I wrote the, about this in my book. I should have a copy here, right? All right, we got our we got our box here in the car. I can show it up and get my my little free plug in here if I can. Can I dig it out? Is it? It's too buried here. I'll get it in a second. I'll be reaching in while I'm talking and rambling. And oh wait, wait, wait! There it is. Freedom. Two thir 2013. I started writing this because I saw this as a growing trend towards localization, away from you know making libertarianism a, a debate club. This is the problem when we confuse aesthetics and preferences with ethics, we turn this into not just a debate club, but a really dumb, irrelevant one, debating aesthetics, like debating whether you know, I'm my favorite color is red and, and I'm right and your favorite cover is, color is blue, so you must be wrong. Let's, like that, That's not a relevant argument. It's not based on respect for individual preferences. So part of what I'm doing with my campaign for president in 2020 and what we're doing, yeah, Ben has to point out for legal reasons, not president at this point, but what we're doing with this and what we're doing in getting people involved with the Libertarian Party is to bring about this shift from being a debate club to being a relevant force in politics. We're not just a philosophy seeking a policy. The policy prescribed by this philosophy is really simple. Localized government, take it apart from the top down, respect the self-determination first of states and of counties, but ultimately of communities and individuals to organize how they see fit. You know, you want a society, you want your, your little uh, private community where guns aren't allowed. I'm not going to live there, but I respect your right to have that. You want one where gays aren't allowed? You know, I'm, I, I'm definitely not going to join that and you know I would never forcefully interfere with that I would probably stop short it 
just ridiculing you on the internet for being a homophobe, if that's the society that you want to live in where gays are banned, but fine, like, we respect that people have preferences, that they have aesthetics for how they want to live, for how they want their communities organized, and the, we present practical policy and localization that makes everyone's life better right away. This is how we unite people. It's not by debating this stupid shit about aesthetics and these ad hominems, or even attacking the Libertarian Party, or just attacking other activists who are doing good work. And again, libertarianism without adjectives. You're not a left libertarian, you're not a right libertarian. If you believe in the core message of ethics, you're a libertarian. And if we can get people united around that, that's how we move forward, that's how we make progress as a movement. And when you get that, you don't attack other people who are striving to make the world a more ethical place, who are striving to increase the standard of ethics. Or if you attack them, it's at least in a respectful, intellectual context. None of this, like even right now, so I mean, someone is saying, you know, Mike Manahan, I, I'm gonna just call you out because I noticed you're coming right away. He doesn't have to sign a dumb letter. I don't know if you're talking to me or whatever. But just, just a letter is not smart or dumb. It's a fucking letter. You know, like, have a little more intellectual integrity for yourself that when you're critical, you don't resort to ad hominems and slander and stupid shit. Like, let's have a culture in our movement of a higher standard of intellectualism, but also a higher standard of conduct, of just being good to each other, of being supportive of other activists. That's what's going to grow this movement. That's what's going to achieve real freedom, not this stupid bickering. So, if you don't like the Libertarian Party, Join us! Do something about it! I've never heard a single complaint about the Libertarian Party that wasn't solved by the person complaining, showing up and doing something about it. And like, I gotta t call out the people who are being critical of Nick Sarwark here, and I'm not, I'm not doing this to defend Nick or to defend anybody else, because, you know, I, everybody I've seen in this conversation has said something stupid. But if you don't like Nick Sarwark, and you're not going to Libertarian Party meetings, shut the fuck up! It's like, it's not that complicated. You don't have any investment in this. You have like, really show up and do something about it. You know, okay, you want to be a pundit on the internet. Fine, that's your thing. Tell your audience. But no, I'm, I'm going to sit back and be one of the cool kids and I'm just going to bitch about Nick Sarwark. Like, like I know, because you're too cool for school. Like, you're too cool to get involved and, 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 and get in the game. And you know, even if you think voting isn't the answer, even if you think politics is a waste of time, fine. You know, respect the people who are taking advantage of the platform that exists because of the state to spread a message that you agree with, that you want to see promulgated in the world to make it a better place. So, did I did I promulgate? Is that too big of a word? No, that's a Shit. Word. That's a good one. Do you like that, we Ben? Need a division ben. of labor within the liberty movement. <laughs> division of labor within the liberty movement. Damn Thank right. you, Zach. So yes, um, but part of that means you know respect for people's specializations, respect for what people are doing. That's uh, that's moving this forward. So if you like this, you know, if you like this message, what I'm talking about today, this is stuff that that's really near and dear to my heart, and it's something that you know I, I'm not perfect at. I, I'll I'll you know grant everyone that I'm not preaching from uh, you know a pulpit where I, I'm claiming my own perfection here. But if, if you like this message, if you think this is important, I mean, really a few things about changing the culture of the libertarian movement. Share this video. Talk to people about this. You know, if if what we believe in is something that we want to use to make the world a better place, you know, you don't have to wait to win elections. Just start being awesome to people. You know, just be good to people. Be be the nice guy at the party. You're not going to win everybody over. You know, you're not going to you're not going to convert people by arguing with them and debating them and making them look stupid anyway. So might as well just be awesome to everybody. Be the guy who laughs at other people's jokes, lifts people up, celebrates other people's projects. You know, be be that guy. That's what it should mean to be a libertarian is that, that you, we you love people because because we respect that right to self-determination Yeah, I mean it, yeah libertarianism is, is very specific and very precise, but to me these these are the cultural implications Be good to people be awesome to everybody lift people up be be loving and, and joyous and, and uniting people against the common enemies of, of you know, big centralized government against the, the common enemies of, of hatred and, and uh, you know, all the things that hold back humanity, irrationality, everything else. So, um, yeah, be awesome. Catherine Bleich, thank you. Love you, Adam. Be awesome. Love you too, sister. Got a couple uh, amens in here. Pamela Phil Phillips has joined us. Good to see you. Um, so now Stefan Kinsella is weighing in here. I get to address him directly, although I think the comment might be... 
too long to pull up here on this little live stream. Let's see. So LP chair effectively accuses Woods of being a white nationalist because he doesn't sign a stupid open letter, which Adam doesn't sign either. No, I haven't. I, I didn't even hear about this shit until this morning. I'm, I got better things to do. I got better things to worry about. And Woods objects, yet Adam says the solution is for Woods to do more for Liberty than he's doing. That's okay now, Stefan. You're just misrepresenting me. I did not say for Tom Woods to do more. Tom Woods is like a great personal friend. I love him. I respect his work. He does a lot, but Stefan and this is right here this is what I'm talking about you're trying to win an argument you're trying to win a debate you're trying to play who's right not how do we make life awesome for everybody that's a way better game to play Stefan I'm sorry you know you're wrong to be engaging in the conversation this way you're not helping you know you want to do more no I didn't say that you're just like no just stop it this is silly you know, but then I only caught part of it. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Stefan. No, and I appreciate what you do, too. You know, Stefan was very helpful with the book. He, you know, went over my section on intellectual property, and I'm forever grateful for this. So, you know, you know, Stefan, I say this with, with all the love in my heart and, and appreciation for you and your work. I hope you can hear this. I hope you can appreciate that, that this is... Um, this is, this is next level shit, and this is lessons I've learned the hard way over 10 years of activism. I'm finally getting to put into practice. And, you know, I, I hope that, you know, I hope that that can, you know, I hope that that can help you be more effective in your activism, that we can all learn from each other's mistakes, right? Smart people learn from their mistakes, really smart people learn from the mistakes of others, and dumb people never learn, something like that. Fool me once. You can't fool me again. That's what yeah, you, you, you yeah. see, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't fool me again, because <laughs> I'm a uniter, not a divider. <laughs> all right, um, Uriel Serafiel, uh, with all the division, love is needed more than ever. Yeah, and I think when you understand even that while libertarianism is this one specific thing, by the way, quick, quick view out the window, we are driving by w one of the most amazing, beautiful lakes here in Washington State that we get to enjoy on this tour. I don't know if if you can appreciate that. Such amazing, beautiful reflections here, getting to travel the country and see all of America. So anyway, what I was getting at is that even though the philosophy is this very specific thing about ethics, it is motivated by love. You cannot deny that it has to be motivated by love. And you might say that that's separate, fine, yes, that is separate from the philosophy itself. But what motivates it is love for humanity, love for yourself, love for your children, love for creating a better world for the future. It has to be love for something, love for freedom itself, love for freedom to, to you know, do your own thing right now in the moment. So Eric Miner, keep fighting the good fight and setting the example. Adam, thanks for what you do. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Pat Williams, I absolutely agree with coming together, calling people fascists that don't sign your petition is not quite a good way of doing that. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm not I'm not defending anybody. I'm just pointing out that I see stuff that, that we can learn from. Catherine Bleich, we are all one. When you love yourself, you change the world. Self-love is the answer. Honor yourself and you will honor all. Catherine, I'm, I'm really grateful to have voices of love and compassion like yours in the movement. I think you set an awesome example. Zach Parks, the LP isn't immune to power struggles. The chairman was probably trying to slander anyone who could challenge his position. <laughs> ben, how long, how many times has Nick been reelected now? He's been reelected once. Once, yeah. And was there like a, I mean, there, uh, Brett Pajunas yeah, ran against us in with a serious campaign. Yeah. Um, what James Weeks was his other opposition? No, Charles Perala was there, um, and Mark, uh, Mark yeah. Rutherford, right. and there was a serious debate. And you know, there were empty seats at the start of even the 2016 national convention. And it's funny, you guys are like talking about who the chair of the Libertarian Party is. Nick's doing his job. He's holding it down. Like, if you want to do better, show up, do better, put forth another candidate, make the party better. You know, I'm not going to say Nick Sarwark is the be-all, end-all. There are plenty of things he could be doing better. But holy crap, to just criticize from the sidelines like this put is, up or is, shut is up. really, yeah, put up or shut up. Thank you, Zach. Uh, Sterling Luan, thank you for weighing in, brother. It was great to have